Kenny Harrell Gardening Simplified. It's February 27th. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to get an early harvest. Now we're out here in the garden, the wind's blowing, so it might have a few mic issues, just bear with me. But as many of you have probably figured out, in order to get an early harvest, you have to get an early start on planting your seeds. Now, uh, right here, I've got green beans I just put out. You know, I've been talking about I was going to use this section up here and go ahead and put green beans in. Now, this variety is tender green, green bean. Uh, I like to plant, normally I'll plant uh, Blue Lakes, I really like them, or I'll plant Kentucky Wonders. But last year we did this tender green for the first year, and the production is so much higher and the flavor is great. So, And we did notice one thing, like I say, you always notice your varieties and how they do. Because we had some cold spells come in, they were coming up. And they actually survived it where some of the others didn't. So uh, they're, they seem to be more cold hardy. They're, they're not a hybrid. So, uh, and I try to stay away from my like open pollinators or heirlooms. For, for mine, you could do your own research and decide whatever you want. Uh, but these seem to do uh, really well. And when you plant an open pollinator, if, if you want to save seeds, you can save seeds because they'll come back true to that that plant okay but anyway we've got our green beans here uh you want to make sure when you plant your green beans now i'm in zone 8b and for us the time that it recommends the best time to start green beans is the middle of march now we're at the end of february now you can plant the first part of march so we're just a little bit early on that uh, but there's still a risk until about the end of march for average uh first frost but like i say these seem to do really good in the cooler temperatures and we're hoping that uh, this will be the year that we can get some vegetables if not it's a few seeds now mine are planted kind of heavy if you're a home gardener and of course if you're getting a little seed pack you might want to plant them uh, a little further apart two three inches apart green beans usually have a real good germination i think these are about 80 so you know we're going to miss about 20 out of 100 uh, we won't miss any here. But anyway, I'm going to get these covered up and watered in good. Now, when you do a uh, plant like this, and you have to use your judgment where you're at, and you may need to use some type of uh, freeze protection if you have a cold spell when you're doing early. But make sure that you keep them watered. Uh, if you're going to get good germination and quick germination, they're going to have to be moist. Uh, a green bean uh, does like good moist soil uh, when it's sprouting. Well, let me get these planted. Okay, now we're just going to water these in. I have spread some uh, fertilizer on the top, just some pelletized chicken litter. Now I want to water these in good. Now I have been watering this section. I'm always a proponent of uh, keeping your soil kind of moist because you have fungi and it needs, or fungi and uh, bacteria that need moisture so that they can grow. Now this row also has uh, little stems from the broccoli. We just cut it out. We don't pull up the roots. And uh, as far as you'll see them here and there, but they don't affect the, the plant growth when your new plant comes out because what happens is by the end of this crop, they'll actually have very little roots left on them because the microbiology in the soil will take and uh, eat them all up, and that'll actually be more for the plant. Now, one thing I want to say, a lot of people will tell you that green means fixed nitrogen in the soil, so you run it as a crop for uh, maybe another crop that's heavy on the nitrogen field. But the chances are, and we're getting quite a bit of wind here, but the chances are is that there won't be any available nitrogen, nitrogen left after this crop is over with. Because what happens is as it's growing, and if you have the right bacteria in the soil, it'll fix nitrogen nodules to the roots. 
But once it starts into the production phase, when it starts blooming, it starts using up this nitrogen store. So if, you're, if your crop matures and finishes out to where there's not much production left, chances is there's not much nitrogen left either in the soil. But now we're going to go in so we can get away from this nasty wind. I know we, we have to have wind for some reason, but uh, we're going to go in and we're going to talk about some early start on some other plants. Okay, we're inside and it's much less windy. Now we're going. What we're going to do now is we're going to extend our season on our cucumbers. Now, normally they're going to recommend in my area about the middle of April, but as you know, years vary. And now, cucumber seeds can be uh, direct sown into the soil that's not a problem if that's the way you want to do then you're going to have to wait or either you're going to have to come up with some measure to protect them these plants will take probably at least two weeks they could take longer before they'll go out cucumbers grow pretty fast and i don't recommend planting them in the little trays i recommend planting them in a bigger tray uh, this here has at least twice the soil of your standard uh 72 cell tray like you would get at the big box stores when you buy a plant uh, <clears throat> what that'll do is it'll give it extra time uh, before you have to transplant now everyone worries a lot about getting root bound it takes an awful lot to really get root bound you'll see a whole lot of roots a lot of times and a plant not be root bound it's still actively going and and growing once it starts getting root bound, normally you'll see darker roots. You won't see all the nice white roots uh, like you will with a healthy plant. But anyway, even if it is developing a lot of roots in there, it has to stay in there an extra amount of time and you're having to give it extra nutrients, maybe uh, some type of liquid feed. Now, I don't recommend uh, chemical or synthetic fertilizers. So if you are if you think I'm talking about uh some of them like miracle Grow regular now. I think they've got a organic one now. But if you're thinking I'm talking about the regular liquid you mix, no, I'm not. I, I wouldn't put those on my plants, and uh, a lot of plants will actually suffer from it, from the salts from it. And if you do your research, you'll know how they're made, and uh, you won't want to uh, use those. But anyway, we're going to talk about cucumbers first. Now, this variety that I'm planting this year is point set, and, and point set is one I first grew last year. Now, for a slice and cucumber, I would recommend this, highly recommend it. And I don't recommend too many, uh, well, I might, certain varieties I really like. I used to plant slice more, which is an excellent slice and cucumber, but it is a hybrid. Now, this is an open pollinator. But the production is probably at least twice that of the slice more I used to plant. And it's just as pretty a cucumber. So uh, what's it got going for it? You can save the seeds. Um, it's going to be cheaper because it's not a hybrid. Now, I picked this up at the, at the farm and ranch. This is a lot of seeds I've done used out of this pack. Uh, I do have a new batch that I picked up this year to make sure I had plenty. And I could save my seeds on it. Uh, that's always a possibility, <clears throat> but uh, this one here is fast growing. It uh, seems to do well to the cold. Now it won't take a freeze, uh, and, and I don't know any of them that will. But what we're going to do is we're going to plant these now. And the reason why I recommend a bigger tray, you could put these in a smaller tray. But if for some reason, and whenever I get ready to put these out, if there's a cold spell that I think might inhibit these things surviving, this right next to the time when I put them out, then I'll be able to keep them in this tray a little bit longer. They will get a little bit harder to manage when you get ready to take them out because these cucumbers are vines, so they're going to get uh, longer. They're going to have a whole bunch of big leaves, and they'll probably be a little bit leggier, which is not going to matter. But it'll give us an earlier start on our crop. So uh, being that it's the end of February right now, now I would normally start my uh, cucumbers at the end of March. That's, that's when I always do. 
Now I did grow some last year, start them in the greenhouse, which, which worked out well, but I had to protect them. But these, if they get any protection, it's not going to be where I give some kind of supplemental heat or something. It's just going to be a matter of maybe I'll, I'll cover them or something like that. But I'm going to go ahead and start these. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start squash. And I'm going to go ahead and start watermelons. Now, I can just hear it now from a lot of people because we get set in our ways. Now, I would never start watermelons at this time of year. I, I mean, I would never start even for an early crop until I talk to a gentleman that is well familiar with uh, commercial watermelon production in our area. And he says that all the watermelon uh, producers try to get their watermelons in the ground they're transplants. They'll grow them from transplants, put them in the green ground, and get them in there by the first week in March. And the reason why that is is because the heaviest uh, sales normally associated with watermelons is the 4th of July. Everybody wants one for their uh, get-together or for their picnic or whatever it is. So they want to make sure they've got them on the shelves. Now, they do grow them in the valley where it's warmer and stuff, California, stuff like that. But we do have a lot of people in our area that's right here close, within five miles of where I am, that commercially grow watermelons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to compete with getting my watermelons out that quick. Not because I'm intending to sell a bunch of watermelons, but because I'm intending to eat a bunch of watermelons. So let me get started with this. Okay, I have my seeds uh, planted here. Now I plant two seeds per sale uh, for two reasons. Number one is uh, insurance, if one of them doesn't germinate, because we very rarely ever have 100% germinating seeds. But if one doesn't germinate, good chance the other one's going to germinate. And the other reason is, is that I find that they do just as well. If two seeds germinate, I don't thin them. I just plant them the same way. And I plant my cucumbers about a foot apart in the row. So, uh, and sometimes I actually plant a row on each side of the trellis, which it makes it a lot harder for picking when they if they really do good because uh, the, the the leaves are so thick. But cucumbers seem to do fine if if they're uh, planted close. So if you're limited area, realize that if you put a put up your trellis and and that's just growing them on a trellis, uh, that a foot apart is not not too far apart. But now all we're going to do, and we planted these roughly, it might look like a half inch. It's probably going to be about a quarter inch once it's done. And any time uh, I plant in cell trays, if the planting depth, if they say it's a it's, uh, half inch deep, I normally just plant them a quarter inch deep. And that's what I normally recommend because there's a difference. Now, if I plant these out, out in the garden and that's one reason I plant them in the cell tray too. If I plant these out in the garden and I plant them shallow like that and the type of uh, compost that I put on top which acts like a mulch too, it tends to dry quick so the amount of moisture is not going to be there and I normally I have to uh, water a whole lot. Now I did germinate some of these out in the garden because I'd already planted a row and instead of uh, putting them inside, I went ahead and planted some more where the uh, row was. And I got pretty fair germination, but not near the germination that I get whenever I'm uh, planting these in cell trays. But I do want you to know these can be direct seeded. There's not a problem with uh, direct seeding them. But if you're going to get it early, like we're trying to do in this video, you have to, uh, you're going to have to start them indoors because uh, the whole reason we plant later is because temperatures aren't exactly where we need to be. Uh, this uh, workshop here where, that I'm in, uh, it's climate controlled and normally it stays somewhere around uh, 70 to 80 degrees. It just varies, uh, you know, where I've got the, the temperature set. So it's it's ideal uh, room for germinating, and 
we can just uh, put these in here, no special treatment. We'll put a dome over the top. You won't have to water them again for those of you that uh, are new to it. Once you water them good when you plant them, and I pre-moisten my potting mix now. A lot of people will put it in their trays and then moisten it, but I, I'm a firm believer in pre-moistening now because I had a lot of problems. And it's just like uh, one person might tell you you don't have to worry about moistening it. Well, when you pick up your... Uh, Pot, your your starter mix or whatever, uh, you probably don't buy uh, big bales of it and three or four of them, and then they sit around here for a while. And what happens is where I score mine, it's rather warm, and they might score in there for six months or longer. I buy them when it's convenient, and a lot of times because the price is definitely going to go up with our inflation. So what I do is... I buy in bulk. Well, they tend to dry out. By the time I use them, and I might do a lot of planting for a while, and then this bag might be open, and then it might dry out. Same thing with my compost. I sift a whole lot at one time. Well, over a period of time, it dries out. Well, it's hydrophobic then. It's not like it is when you first get it when it's got a little bit of moisture in it. Once it dries out, it doesn't want to take water and this is a situation the reason why i always say that is because be sure that your your uh, starter mix is going to take moisture uh, you don't want to have everything set up in the trays and you think it's watered and, and it's not taking the water and then you end up your seeds aren't germinating you're wondering why or your plants not growing and you're wondering why and i've got an old tomato video where I potted up some tomatoes where I address that issue and actually show you what it looked like and even with soaking my trays put filling this tray up with water and letting them soak they would not absorb it because they were hydrophobic and it's something about putting water there and stirring your hands around and and uh, that's why so many people don't understand growing but there's something to do with your body's uh, magnetics or electronics or whatever that the charge from that appears to make the the mix start taking moisture. So it, it could be just the the movement of mix mixing it around in in your uh, container or whatever that causes it. It's it's a lot, so it'll go ahead and actually soak up without having to add some kind of chemicals like this. So you can use uh, your dish soap or something, put a few drops in there and that'll you know, let's not put chemicals in our food. There's, there's enough of that. So anyway, I've got this variety. I've got another variety of cucumbers I'm planting. Now this is a, the National Pickling Cucumber. This is the one that National Pickles used to uh, well, and they may may still uh, use, and a lot of people that pickle like to use this one. I grew it last year, and the production wasn't all that great, but I started it late in the season uh, to try it out and to see the pickle is great, uh, but I had a lot of deformities because of heat, poor pollination, stuff like that. So this year I'm going to start it early with these. I, I'm planning to grow uh, quite a few cucumbers this year and i've got to stock my uh, pickles back up in the pantry so uh, we're gonna and a lot of times i want to talk about pickling too these cucumbers here this point set i pickled with these last year i, I had a, a lot of these as a late crop and i had a lot of these and i pickled with them but and i always do uh, spears uh, I don't slice, and I, I may do holes if I have a lot of little ones and I'm having to harvest them up. But normally I do spears. And this pickle uh, really pickled great. Uh, it uh, took the flavor good. Of course, it's good tasting cucumber to start with. But it also stayed uh, crisp, you know, and I don't know how it would do as far as because I try to do a two year supply. So in case I end up without, uh, a season, which I'll, I, 
I just almost completely run out of pickles last year. So, but we got enough to carry us through. But it actually, it, it tastes good. And, and for the short term, I can say that it was good for pickle. And then it's, and it's really excellent for uh, fermented pickles. If, if you like fermented pickles, it's, it's an excellent one for that too. Uh, but for the short term so far, because I don't, just, I don't have a, a chance that I've stored them for a couple of years because I had pickles from back uh, almost four years ago. Uh, I pickled real heavy and I've been eating them and they were just starting to get to where they were a little soft. They were still good, but they didn't have that nice crunch uh, like they normally would. But like I say, this is, this is kind of uh, universal for me. This makes a good uh, pickle and cucumber too. But anyway, I'm going to get these other ones set up and then we're going to talk about watermelons because that's maybe a little bit of a different story when it comes to uh, transplanting them. Okay, I did plant one tray of prolific uh, squash, which is a yellow straight squash. And now we come to the watermelons. And this is just such a selection. Now, I have so many different varieties. I actually have a couple more that I didn't take out, but I have to decide between these. Now, a lot of these seeds are older. You can see this is from uh, 2020. I try to label when I've got them. Uh, these were from uh, 2021. I they they germinated good. I have some others, but it's to decide on the variety. Now, for those of you that's out there, if you have a favorite watermelon, please let me know uh, and let me know why you like it so much. Uh, now, I have these here, and I forgot. I actually had, I bought some new seeds. No, I'm not looking for all the chokes. I bought some new seeds uh, for a tender sweet. Now, the big problem is deciding which one you want. Now, the tender sweet, it is actually a uh, orange meat or yellow meat, depending on what you want to call it. I call it orange meat. It's really orange inside. And if you get a really good one, uh, oh, it's fantastic. It's, you know, for those of you that think that a watermelon's got to be red, uh, if you haven't tried this one and you haven't grown your own uh, now, then uh, you don't know what you're missing. Okay, we've talked about that one. The All Sweet, this is one that a lot of commercial growers grow. This is a more... A, elongated it's a longer watermelon it's good size it is sweet of course it's got sweet in the name but it is sweet it's a really good watermelon uh, i could eat two or three a day it wouldn't bother me uh, black diamond is one that a lot of people especially in the south are familiar with this is a uh, can get really large uh, you might find one 40 pounds i mean it's that's of course who wants to eat it? I might. Well, anyway, Crimson Sweet, uh, that's another good variety. Uh, Legacy. Uh, Legacy is supposed to be a good one. I have not actually tasted this. I planted some of these seeds last year and my early crop, which was actually late. That it was... I. Tilled up a new area, I'd put them out. Of course, it's it's uh, not much nutrients there, but it couldn't keep the water in it because it's there's not a lot of organic matter there either. So it created a problem, and they they didn't do well at all. All my watermelons that were down there were I call them chicken melons, but this is supposed to be a good one. It's commercially grown too. A lot of uh, the growers you'll see they grow Jubilee. Now this was my uh, late crop that I put behind the greenhouse last year that uh, took over and uh, they got almost right but then the the uh, freeze came in killed them back and 
you know, we got a taste, but it wasn't that wasn't near like a Jubilee should be. And so we're going to grow this one this year for sure. Uh, we're going to grow the all sweet for sure. And we're going to grow the tender sweet for sure. Uh, this royal golden watermelon. Now this is a yellow watermelon, but it's red meat inside. It's it was supposedly it's supposed to uh, be easy to tell when it's ripe because when it turns a, a bright or yellow color, then it's it's ready. Now we did grow some of these a few years back, but we didn't really. Uh, <clears throat> I don't, they didn't get to the ripening stage. You got too much heat and they couldn't take it. And so uh, they ended up failing. This is probably worth trying, but it's probably not worth trying as a, an early watermelon crop. Uh, and being we've got to narrow it down too, I don't know. It's, you know, I, I don't want too many watermelons. We might, uh, take and plant three trays that would each one of these trays is uh, three dozen that's quite a few though we might just we might just plant two two trays and we'll uh, I'm definitely going to go with a, a we'll just do three trays and we'll split them in half that, that sounds like a, a deal to me but what I want to talk about watermelons, I told you I'd get with you on that on the end, is one thing is making the decision. Now, if you want to grow uh, uh, watermelons, don't start out with seedless. In fact, I don't even recommend growing seedless watermelons. When, when you start genetically modifying or cross, I say they're not GMO. They're actually crossbred, but the way they do it is the uh they breed two different they breed a two different types of watermelons that makes it to where the offspring of that seed and say one like these gives you a genetically sterile uh watermelon that's the reason why you don't see seeds in them is because uh they're bred that way and to me that's not natural you know, it's just not natural, but it's kind of like breeding a, a horse and a donkey and getting a mule. Uh, a mule's useful, don't, don't get me wrong, but uh, we don't eat mules. Uh, we, we don't. And I think that, our, that we need to reconsider a lot of the ways we look at food whenever we're going to eat it. So, but number two, the seeds are really expensive. They'll send you maybe about 10 seeds. It costs you a pretty good penny and then the th trick is getting them to germinate because they like a real even moisture now a lot of people that uh, I see on these different uh, YouTube channels they'll take and uh, they explain and then and they get better at it you know the second year because a lot of them I fall for a while but uh, They'll put them in a tray and they'll wrap the tray with cellophane that keeps it real moist. And then you really got to keep an eye because once they start to pop, you got to get that cellophane right off. Otherwise, uh, you could lose them. They're, they're, they're a pain in the butt. So if you're wanting a watermelon, it's best to stick with one of these other varieties and do your research or, or just uh, get one. Jubilee is an excellent watermelon uh, all the way around. The all sweet, which is a hybrid, uh, it's good. The tender sweet, it's been around for a long time, and and I've always loved when I when I grow it, or if I not growing watermelons, if I can find a vendor that has uh, that variety. But I haven't found a watermelon I I don't like. Now I'm not going to try to grow uh, sugar babies this year. It's a good watermelon. Uh, but it's small and for the amount of seeds, and I don't mind uh, spitting seeds. In fact, it doesn't hurt to eat seeds, and the seeds have uh, really a lot of nutrients that your body can use. So uh, if you swallow one, no, it won't make you pregnant or it won't grow watermelon in your belly. 
But when it comes to germinating any watermelons, make sure uh, when you plant them, and it's a lot of people say uh, don't transplant. Well, the commercial people transplant their watermelons. So uh, when you hear someone say don't transplant, that that might be something that maybe someone had a hard time sooner or later. Always use discernment. I, I put out a video and it's been way, way back. It's a couple years or so back. Uh, and I it was about the most important tool on the homestead. And it's it's your brain. You know, you gotta have common sense. And if you don't have common sense, you need to develop common sense. Uh you know, it's like if you put a lot of water on your plant and then it starts wilting down, turning yellow and dies, have enough common sense to know that you're overwatering it. If you don't have any common sense, uh, you're, you're not going to be a, a, able to garden. I know on a lot of gardening channels, whenever they talk about uh, someone will ask this and you'll get uh, 15 different answers, you, you know, uh, when to plant, what to plant. Uh, anything like that because it's it's the some people are just out there trying to give you information so it sounds like they have information some people uh they they know they they may know some about gardening but they don't understand about it do your research that's the best way you're going to learn uh, but before i get in a, a long rant use common sense uh, but when you plant these now all my Seeds that I'm planting today are have domes on them. Now, and a lot of people say, well, we have too much microplastics in our uh, soils and our bodies and stuff like this, so don't plant in plastic trays. Let's use common sense. These same people go to the grocery store. They buy groceries. They're in, they drink Cokes. They drink... It's in plastic bottles. It's in plastic containers. It's in plastic bags. You you have to understand that if you're going to get away from that, then you need to start changing the way you do uh, a lot of things in glass and stuff. And that's another thing. So if you can get you some cell trays, this is a fabulous way to grow. You don't you can start out with one of those kits from uh, the big box stores if. You end up with trays that are not separated. You can actually cut those trays down to size so you can separate them. Don't plan to plant different types. And it's even like I'll, I'll plant different seeds from different years in here for my watermelon. Some are going to germinate faster. When these germinate, I don't want to leave them under a dome. And if you don't have a dome, you can always use a saran wrap or, or uh, construction uh, plastic. Everything that you buy has plastic on it. One, one year I didn't have enough domes and I just cut the, the plastic bags, did a lot of things come in, whether it's furniture or whatever, cut them down to the size that fit and got clips and just clipped them to my trays and just watch them close and when they come up, then pull it off. You know, you can adjust without having to uh, they can have a big budget, but I don't recommend growing in cups. It's just uh, they they take a lot of uh, starter mix. Uh, a lot of people say, well, use colored cups so the roots don't fit, but then they don't fill them up with the starter mix and stuff. Take and, and spend a little bit of time to uh, get you just a few trays or maybe one to start out with. You're not if you're not doing this commercially. You don't need near that many plants. You know, uh, six watermelons would take up a whole lot of area. So uh, you wouldn't want very many of them anyway. But you want to be able to take these containers out with the different varieties. I don't want to plant two varieties in one cell tray because one might come up quicker. Uh, one seed might be older and germinate slower. Uh, whatever reason, and then I couldn't take it out from under there because when it's when it's out to fight for light, it's not going to uh, it's going to get laggy in a hurry, and 
if you have to take the dome off or the covering off and the others aren't germinating good, then you can affect the germination on those other ones, especially if they're really delayed. You know, I've had uh, seeds that maybe they're two weeks behind another one. So uh, understand that when you're planting. But anyway, the main thing I want to uh, hit on here is if you're going to start early and get production early, you're going to have to put your seeds in early and you're going to have to take certain risks. If you're worried about uh, killing plants, you know, or, or, you know, some people feel like they're plant murderers or something. I don't feel that way. You know, if I plant extra plants, uh, then I can give them away. If I can't, I can compost them. And it uh, looks like I got help over here today. But uh, plants, extra plants, if you're planting an early crop and you're worried that you're not, that it might get killed, go ahead and start your regular crop at the time you're going to start it. Uh, and you'll have extra plants. If you don't need them, uh, you know, be generous and give them to somebody. If you have room, put in more plants somewhere else. But uh, if you're going to have produce that you can count on, that you know what's in it, you know how it's been grown, you're going to have to grow your own food. And this is one way to extend your season by starting it early. I showed earlier my unconventional uh, potato planting. I've done this several times. Uh, sometimes it's late in the year. Sometimes it's early in the year. And it always works, but it's adaptable. If you use common sense, it's adaptable to where you can start something. So it starts growing weeks or months ahead of time. I guess it's time to wrap this up, Then I've got uh, my annoying cat here. Okay, well, what do you, want, what do you got to say, Oreo? What do you got to say? Okay, well. I hope you found some value in this for sure. And I hope you uh, try to start some of your crops earlier. I know a lot of you are out there. And if you are, uh, let me know in the comments. Let the other people that uh, watch this vehicle, this video, know so, so uh, they won't be afraid to. And, of course, if you're not subscribed, you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe Hit the bell, select all, and of course, give it a big thumbs up and share this video. Enjoy that gardening experience.